What is up, fellow bench warmers? Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Bench Warmers. My name is JJT with Commish Eric, and we are a few minutes before one of our drafts, but we decided to kick things off with some depth chart analysis. Commish, uh, uh, next set of teams we'll talk about. Uh, just maybe just quick for for so that. Uh, we can go through all five of them. Uh, I'll share my screen. Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, and Golden State. Okay. Uh, where, where, where do we start? All right. So we'll start with Cleveland. I just... Okay. All right. Do you see it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cleveland. There. All right. So starters here, Dar- Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Max Struss, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. Um, and of course, the bench, guys. Not a lot of depth of the bench. Yeah, actually, um, not much difference in their starting five. No? So I would... I would assume they would be uh, same same minutes breakdown for their starting five. Maybe except for Evan Mobley, he might be getting, of course, a jump, no, for his uh, for 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 his second season. So hopefully he takes the next step up. But you're you're right. Uh, the depth is not that solid. But they did add some players there, like Struss and George Niang. You no, know? so I think those two will play a big a big role. For for them, but not draftable. I don't. I. It depends on uh, which, what kind of leagues uh, you are in. But I don't think they are really draftable in twelve team or even fourteen team leagues. Uh, they're probably more in the, I don't know, sixteen maybe max trust a little bit if you want really yeah. a specialist at the latter part of the. Of the draft, but uh, maybe in a way deeper, like eighteen or twenty team league, uh, you can you can consider them. No, uh, but never. I, I've never been a fan of uh, Kyrie Levert, so uh, <laughs> I don't think I, I I don't think I don't think I, I've ever drafted him in any league. But uh, again, if you can draft Max Truss in sixteen teams, I think Levert. Has a little chance, no? If there's some injuries out there, actually, we're not even sure if who will be the the starting small forward. You have Max Truss here. Some have Caris Levert. Some have Isaac Okoro. So that is another problem for Levert. Uh, he's not even guaranteed to be the starter, no. So so yeah. that's 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 a question mark for him. All right. Yeah. So there are only four guys here who's you know uh, rosterable, and actually. Cleveland's top four guys are highly rated or highly yeah. they're right above you know top sixty at worst, right? All of all four of these guys. In fact, you know, Garland, Mitchell, probably arguably can be your second round, right? Uh mid- Mitchell. To- I think Mitchell will be should be a second round. He's a little bit underrated. Yeah. But Garland might be too high for him. Maybe 30s maybe maybe third early round. third yeah third round for sure he's also underrated uh, by the way yeah um but the biggest you know the most exciting player here for fantasy managers is evan mobley how where do you see him this year do you see him taking that leap that everyone's talking about because everyone's talking about him taking that next step he will take the next step, but he won't take the step that people will want him to take. Maybe people are already Where is he being taken. He's being picked at the around late third. Late to, late third, 36, 37. Yeah, 36, 37 to around, around 40. 40. Yeah. Yeah. His his rank, I think, let me check. I think his rank is I think it's around the forties. Yeah, I think his rank is forty one. No, so that's very low. That's too low. So I think he should his ADP is forty three point five, so that's even lower. No, so that that's 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 there's value there. I think he can be around thirty 
maybe 32 to 30, 30 to 35 range. You know, his ceiling this year, at least this year, probably 20, 25, maybe 25 to 20, 20 around that, that range, maybe late second round. He could, he could reach that. That's, that's probably the highest he could reach, but at least the, the late third, that's the, the, the perfect position to grab him. My opinion. Is he a better pickup than Wembanyama? Who's being picked at the forties too? If you think about it, I mean, people might not agree, but I think, yeah, uh, he's he doesn't have Wembanyama's upside. Wembanyama can probably get all the way up to the top twenty this year if he really, you know, pans out. But I think he's a safer pick and a pick with also a little with also some upside, you no? Know, because in the Wembanyama area, there's other players like Vucevic, you know, like Miles Turner. Those are guys who are basically already, you know, you know what you will get. You no, know? mm-hmm. Mobley, Mobley will not have as much upside, but still has upside. So you get a little of both, you know, both worlds in 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 that sense. Yeah. So you know, uh, because they're being picked right there, pretty much the same uh, area, or you know, a Wembanyama sometimes a little higher. As yeah. Well. All right. Let's move on to the next team. So that's Cleveland for you guys. The next team is the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, let me just pull out the Mavericks depth chart. Okay, the Mavericks—they're very—they're uh, a very interesting team. No, I could just, of course, Luca. No, we can. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about Luca. Luca has gone as high as two, as low as five. But this year, in general, he is being picked higher than by by. Uh, Everybody, because in other other seasons, there will be the Luca fans who will pick him high, but there will be you know experts or other non-believers in fantasy who f- feel like he's not a top ten, top twelve player because of the free throws and turnovers. Mm-hmm. And we're one of them. I'm one of them. Before I I don't believe in picking him in a top five before, but this season uh, I think he he should deserve a top five pick for a lot of reasons. No, because also a lot of risks with the other top players and i think um he's well he's in shape as for now uh, he's not that uh, chubby uh, right now and also i think there will be some free throw um improvement so i think especially in head to head uh luca is a worthy top 5 pick and another thing in head to head you know luca his free throw is not high but there are games where he really shoots well mm, yeah. you know his free throw falls down because there are games where he shoots really terribly. And in head-to-head, you know, that will help because in some weeks where he shoots well, then, you know, you can you can win that week, right? So there's a diff- there, there, there will be a effect if he shoots that way. You know, he's not consistently bad. They're good, they're bad. So in head-to-head, that, that, that matters. All right. In looking at the, the Dallas depth chart, uh, not a lot of players that are going to be interested fantasy wise. Uh, mm. But any player, because it's you know pretty much Luca and Kyrie, right? Yeah. The rest, Luka and Kyrie. Mm, you know, I don't know if they're going to be rosterable in, in a standard twelve team or even a fourteen team. It's so hard to pick any of these. Guys, but any player that could maybe get in or at least or you know be worthy of being rostered, or that might surprise us. Rishon Holmes is one. I think he's the third for me, the third uh, draftable player here. If, if draftable I'm... in what? How deep of a league? Even in twelve teams, I think uh, Rishon is being drafted in twelve team leagues. He's being drafted in twelve team leagues, and he. He is worth a shot because, you know, just three to four seasons ago, maybe two seasons or three seasons ago, he was a top 100 pick, no? But, uh, of course, he fell off the map. Last year, Sacramento just totally went with other people, even went with Alex Len over him. But this is Dallas. This is a new team. Maybe he rediscovers that. And he's only got, who, Dwight Powell ahead of him. Derek Lively, I know a lot of people are high on the rookie, but he's a rookie. And that this team wants to contend. So I don't think they will really have that patience to play him, you know, right away, heavy minutes. So at least even for the early part of the season, I think Rishon Holmes is 
is a uh, not a sleeper, maybe a gamble. No, somebody would you know if you pick the last pick is Sean Holmes, maybe 140s, 150s. He could possibly be top top 100 if he gets you know 25 to 30 minutes. We we never we can never discount that because Dwight Powell is not really a, somebody you could consider a high upside or even somebody who's always been healthy. He's always had. Well, some Dallas injuries. is not really known for the centers. They've never really had yeah. a good yeah. fantasy center uh, since Luca came in. So. Yeah, uh, there's not no changes here, but I guess Rishon Holmes add a little more excitement. Uh, but that's a you know, pretty much and an understatement here. There are young players here. Josh Green is one. If you want something younger, uh, Josh Green can take the next step up. No, uh, he played well last year, though he did not. Uh, he's not. He's for me, his stat set doesn't really translate to fantasy. No, that well. As of now, but he's 0.7 steals. He has 1.13 pointers, and you know he he shoots the ball the ball very well, 50 something percent, 53 percent. So I think Josh Green, if he just maybe gets the steals to one, you know, gets to 1.5 to two three pointers a game, he gets 30 minutes, which is possible. Look at the depth chart. Uh, he's another yeah. player you can consider, especially in deeper leagues. In deeper leagues, Josh Green, but somebody to monitor. Seth Curry is the last person I, I would just want to mention. Um, he's back in Dallas. You know, he's a guy we know can score. So if you need points, mm -hmm. maybe Seth. Maybe Seth can give you that because, you know, he will have his chance here in Dallas compared to his previous teams. All right. So that's the Dallas depth chart. Now let's move on to the defending champions, uh, Denver Nuggets. Now, who if lost you, some key players. Yes, if you think Cleveland is not deep, then you haven't seen Denver's depth chart. No, this is even uh, shallower. Uh, the first five is solid. That is that was. The, I think this is their first five when they won the championship, right? Uh, I think uh, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, they yeah. lost Bruce Brown. No, we know we, we know they great. lost Bruce Brown, which is huge. I, is it yeah. just Bruce Brown? Uh, I don't think Reggie Jackson was in their rotation last year. They, he was, he was. He was traded for Bones. Yeah, but they, he was, I, in the playoffs, he was not used at all. Well, no, very, yeah. very limited. Um, Michel Brown had, was the, the player that yeah. was used more often. So I guess we just make it fast here. You know? Jokic is number one, you agree? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. He's on number one until he is not. Yeah. Okay. Jamal Murray is going at top fifty. Um. I think that's right. I think Jamal Murray last year, first year after ACL, was impressive. I think this year, usually, remember those who get injured needs one and a half to two seasons before they get they become what you know who they were. So this is the season for Jamal. So I really think he has that next gear to go to. So I like the top 50 for Jamal. I don't know if you agree, Jamal top 50 this year. Well, uh, yeah, but he's also being picked there. Of course, we love Jamal's value last year. Uh, yeah. Being picked, what, 70s, right? Um, so, yeah, I think it's okay. Top 50 is fine, um, but like we, we've seen in the in the drafts, there are lots of guard options as well, uh, all over the place. It seems like it's there's an abundance of guard wherever position or tier that you're looking at. There's a lot of them. Uh, so yeah, I think he is he could be that top fifty, but top fifty might be the upside. I don't. I'm not sure if he's gonna go higher than fifty. I think this year there is a chance. No, this year there is a chance because. Because of this depth chart, since we're talking about depth chart, no, uh, I, I really don't know if they can rest Jamal this year. They before have, they were... have Reggie Jackson. Exactly. They have Reggie Jackson. I mean, if this was Bones, maybe. But uh, even, even if they have Reggie, the rest of the bench, of course, Christian Braun, we know is a very... It's better, better real-life player than fantasy. No, Let's just put yeah. it that way. Peyton Watson can play. Now, Peyton Watson can play. I'm just not sure if he's ready, ready to take that step this year. 
Uh, even Zeke Naji has potential. But all of these are young players, no? And and I'm not sure if all of them can can be relied on consistently. So I think Jamal's usage this year, I think, will be way higher than previous years. So I think top 50 would be the floor, actually. I think the ceiling might not be top 15, top 20. It's not that. But probably 35, you know, third round level in 12 teams, I think that is possible for Jamal. And he's crucial in drafts because, yeah, in his tier, actually, if you missed out on a lot of the point guards early on, Jamal Jamal is there at the I think the 60s sometimes he's, sometimes he's there. Yeah. So so he's a guy that you can pick later on. He's, he's 45 actually. So ADP is 42 around the 50 sometimes he falls to the 50s. So he can be that uh, point guard you you target if you miss out early on. Yeah. Uh other players that might surprise you. Um yeah, Aaron MPJ Gordon. Jay is being picked Late Aaron Gordon's being picked late, late in the top 100. Uh, Somehow, you know, I I like Aaron Gordon more than MPJ this year. Again, depth chart. Uh, Aaron Gordon should be playing much more, getting a bigger role. He's not again another player who doesn't translate well to fantasy, but I think he can easily get 35 minutes this year. Just me, no. I think 32, 33 is the lowest he can go as high as 35. So with that number of minutes and uh. With with his game starting to improve, also his outside shooting, you know, he started the steals and blocks are not there yet, but outside shooting and the other things have fallen into place, have improved. So I like Aaron Gordon this year, especially around one twenty above. I like him there. Uh, MPJ, uh, never been a fan, so I don't know. I don't know if you agree with me with MPJ, but never really been. I never really liked him because he's too one dimensional for my like. Uh, not not a lot of contributions across the board for MPJ, yeah. I guess. Uh, Detroit. Detroit's going to be interesting because they have lots of good, unlike the you know, the first three teams that we talked about, Detroit has a lot of really good potential fantasy contributors. Uh, but uh, I would ask you if you think this is the starting five because that's very important. Uh, to talk about in Detroit. Is this the starting five for the team? Do you think this is it? Who's their coach again this year? Uh, Monty. Monty Williams is their coach. Uh, I think the question mark here is whether they go too big. Duren, Weissman. Isaiah Stewart, Duren. Isaiah Stewart, Weissman. There's still Marvin Bagley there. Uh, will Osar start? I mean, this is the first time I've seen him in a depth chart as a starter. Uh, I usually see him as a backup. And Bojan starting at small forward. So there's a lot of question marks here. I don't know how you see it, but I see it as K, Jaden, Bojan, and two bigs. I don't see Osar starting right away, but I may be wrong. Uh, so who's starting at small forward for you? Bojan. I think Bojan will start at small yeah. forward. And then power forward. I have Duran at power. Yeah, I think Duran power power forward. And then I have Weissman at center. Or Duran and Stewart. That one I'm not yet uh, sure uh, how that will that will. Uh, which which uh, makes Detroit a very interesting, yeah, team to watch out for, especially during the preseason games, uh, just to see how they. I know I know it doesn't gauge, but but you'll be able to see how they're going to use some of these guys, uh, especially towards the early part of the preseason. Just even the starters, you'll see uh, who might start. But it looks like a lot of these players are, even even shooting guard, do they really start Jaden Ivey? They start. I think that I think that will be who they start. I think my question more here is, you know, Kate Cunningham has been the favorite of all the experts. All the experts, consistently. A sleeper. I didn't expect that because I thought, you know, after last season, he might come at a discount. But everybody has hyped him to the point that he's being picked in the second round. Now, which is no, too so high, I'm, right? Which is what I want to ask you. What What is your take on Cade Cunningham this season? I think he's being picked too high. Second round is too high. I could maybe take a flyer in a third. Um, but I can understand why, though. Because, like I said, the second round options aren't as safe either. 
So if you're gonna go risk, you know, take risk with high upside, Cade might be that guy. Um, so I can understand why he's being picked there, but coming off an injury, um, I just feel like early in the season he might disappoint, especially if you pick him in the second round. I'd rather him, you know, get to the third, uh, late third at best. That's the best. I think early. I, guess. I think mid third, around thirty. I, I'll I'll consider him twenty seven to thirty. I'll be okay with that. Cade, Cade, Cade I I was high on Cade last year. I had him a lot, in our of, league. a lot of people were high on. Yeah, I have him in our league and then he he basically screwed my season. So maybe there's a bias there. But I, I like I like his game, but uh I think last year he shot 41%. I don't think that's really how he will shoot, but I don't also f- believe what other people are saying that you know he can shoot 47% and 48. I don't think it's going to be that big of an improvement. I think if it goes to 44, 45%, that's already a win. But the other parts of his game, uh, number one, I think he's healthy. The injury, as everybody has said, it's not something that's long term. It's not something that will have effects. Now, if you fix it, you're fine. That's 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 usually how it is. So we we can disregard that. And I think uh, if he shoots forty five percent, he can average twenty. Another thing, other people think he's going to average twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. I don't think that's a given. I think maybe twenty to twenty two points. But the six rebounds, six assists, I think he can do that. And maybe 1.2 steals. So, yeah, I think the upside is still there. There's still a lot of room for him to improve. That's why I get why people love him. But it's just that I don't think it's just one category that he has to improve. I think he has to get the points. I think he has to get the field goal. I think he has to get the steals. That is why I don't think, you know, picking him in the second round is really a wise thing to do. Maybe 27 to 30. That's that's where I, I believe he should be picked. Yeah. Uh, any player that might surprise us other than Cade? Uh, well, I like Osar. Uh, I've I've li- I've loved Osar even in 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 his overtime elite days. Uh, he's very athletic and he gets a chance here in Detroit. I mean, it's just Bojan. Joe Harris, I think, is playing on one leg. No, so, you don't say it's just Bojan. Bojan. Uh, Bojan is scorer. old. Yeah, but Bojan and is old, old. And old. And old. Uh, he he. When I'm not saying Ostar will come out of the gate and be good, but there will come a time when they will have to play him and Bojan will have to give way. That will happen, and that, that could happen January, I don't know, February, I'm not sure, but that will and happen. When, so, when, when the season's pretty much over for Detroit, I and think it will happen, and, and that's how it happened last year where Bojan started off really hot, yeah, really well early on, and then of course, everyone expected it shut down later on. Yeah, um, and then they let the young guys. Play. I think so. This could bigger, happen as well to Detroit the big, this year. The big, the bigger question mark is Duran Stewart, Weisman, Bagley. What will happen to those to these guys? I think Duran is being picked in the nineties, no, eighty to one hundred, which I can see. I can see it happen. He's a double double guy, 11, 12, 10, maybe one block or maybe point eight. He doesn't block well, but his field goal is solid. He can go to fifteen points a game very easily. Uh, you know, if he gets enough minutes, but uh, very, very risky. I just put it that way. <laughs> if picking him at top 100 is very risky given that depth, no? Isaiah Stewart was injured for a big part last year. He's healthy now. So, yeah, we don't... But but if you ask me who is draftable there, it's Duran and Stewart. Those, those are the two. Stewart, late, late in the draft. You can, you know, if you need bigs, you, mean, you can try him. All right. Uh, I know Commission's draft is about to start, but let's yeah, let's go. One last wrap right? it up. Yeah, wrap it up with uh, the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, Warriors, Warriors. Uh, the question mark: Will they start Chris Paul? I think that's the big thing. We know Steph is top ten. It's a given. Uh, <laughs> this is a small. Philippine uh, height level starting five. No, two players probably under six feet or six feet one. So I don't know if this will work, but this is what this how they will start. I think for the season. Yeah, I guess you know Curry is a given first rounder. The rest, I think, pretty much the same now. For me, the biggest question mark here is Chris Paul. I think this is the lowest that we're you know. 
Chris Paul is being is being drafted, right? Outside of what top forty? Way way he's, outside top forty. Way outside, he's, right? He's at, ADP right, seventy. Or 70. ADP seventy. Yeah. So, do you think that's really good value already for Chris Paul? Um. Yeah. I think it's good value. Seventy. Good. That's good value. That's, What's the upside? What's the upside here? Top fifty. I mean, he can still do top fifty. I mean, uh, his assists will still be there. One point three to one point one point two, one point three steals, around six or seven. That's the worst case, I think. Six or seven assists. He can still score double figures, solid percentages. I think his field goal will definitely improve. You now this year, he's solid. We know he's a good free throw shooter, but field goal is gonna be open. It's gonna be open for for uh, a lot of the shots. The question is, will the style of play fit? For Chris Paul, because he's not he's been ball dominant, right? And you know that's not how Golden State plays. So that is just my question for Chris Paul. And plus, the the rest, the load management. That is really the concern. No, the yeah, load management. That's a major concern. Yeah, that's a major concern. Uh, also, I think you know, not here yet, but there. I think I we've heard that Dwight Howard is working out for the Golden State Warriors. Not sure. Yes. To get yes. plug him in, and I think that could help a little bit in the assist of Chris Paul. Maybe uh, if they play both those guys, maybe have a pick and roll option because you know there's none really here for 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 Golden State. No pick and roll threat, and that's usually where Chris Paul thrives uh, with the pick and roll with a big man. So I think yeah. I can see why they're trying uh, Dwight Howard. Out. Uh, other players that can anyone that can surprise us Kevon Looney was a no, rebounding think, machine during the playoffs I think Draymond Draymond Green no Draymond Green is somebody that might surprise he's being picked I don't know past the other players no uh when past the 100s but uh yeah I think Green should be a guy to consider uh, I think he's being drafted too low now that he be, he has now become, um, what you call, he has now become as underrated. Part of the old man group. Yeah, part of the old man group. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, not a lot of he he doesn't he's not a triple double machine right now. I think that's yeah. where you know Draymond was at his peak when he was a triple double machine. Now he's more like a one of the better utility guys that you have who can do a little bit of everything. He's also not the type who will also do the four steals, four blocks type of game. That 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 type of uh, game from Draymond is far long gone. So so yeah, but Draymond might surprise uh, might surprise us this year. And of course, Chris Paul as well. Uh, the other guys, Clay Wiggins, I think they'll be the same, right? The, Clay, what we saw before. Clay is I being think. drafted. Yeah, Clay is being drafted a little high. No, I, I think the good. He's drafted. He's being drafted because of his name. But I, I won't yeah. pick him in the top eighty, if I were you. <laughs> yeah, he's become a specialist at this point. Yeah, one of the yeah. better specialists. Uh all right, draft is ongoing, so we'll we'll switch back to uh we'll switch back to we'll switch to another episode, episode as we record the draft. But for now, hope that helped. The five teams will will continue more with the depth chart in the coming days. Uh, but for now, we'll see you again in the next episode. Bye, guys.